So hi guys, so we're gonna start today our Brewing Foundation course and we will be talking about how we create a recipe for filter coffee. So we need to think about the different variables that will be affecting our brain and what parameters we can change when we are extracting coffee. First of all, we will start thinking on how much coffee do I want and how much water do I want. That is the coffee to water relationship, that ratio. So let's choose first the dose. We can choose any dose. I want 10 grams, I want 12 grams, I want 15 grams. Yeah, let's start with 15 grams. So I'm gonna choose 15 grams. And now how much water do I want or do I need in order to efficiently extract my coffee? We cannot choose any rate. This is not about choosing the rate that I prefer depending on the body that I like in coffee. So we will need a minimum amount of water in order to efficiently extract that coffee. So we can go for a rate in between 1 to 15 or 1 to 20. If we go lower than 115, we're going to struggle a lot trying to get the flavors of the coffee. Of course, we can push the extraction using other variables, grind settings, time, but it's not going to be the same. Why is that? Because we're going to get a high body that will make it very hard for us to perceive the flavors. So a high body perception will make a lower clarity perception of flavors. We're going to lose complexity and at the same time we're going to lose acidity. So we're going to just choose a typical ratio of 15 grams uh, multiplied by 16 times. So 15, 16 times is... So we're going to have a 240 grams. Yeah. Why do I choose that one? So I'm going to choose a kind of low ratio because this coffee is not very dense. So we can think, we can forecast what relationship of coffee to water we want depending on the type of coffee. It depends on the roast, it depends on the quality, it depends on the complexity, it depends on its density, how easy it is to dissolve that coffee. If it's not a very soluble coffee, like in a very, very light rose, we're going to need more water. If it's a very, very dark coffee, we're going to need less water. So that 15 to 20 uh, coffee to water ratio works mainly with light rose coffee or medium light rose coffee. So we're going to use that 15, 16, yeah? So it's like, is it is a light rose? It's medium light rose, but it's not a very dense variety. It's Lini S795, it's an Indonesian coffee. And at the same time, it has a very specific fermentation. So because of that, I'm not choosing 1 to 17, 1 to 18, 1 to 19, which I could choose when I am using, for example, a very dense coffee. Uh, let's talk about Kenyan coffees. They are very dense, then yeah, we can go to 117 and even 1 to 18. So let's start. We're gonna have 15 grams. And we're gonna keep a little bit of extra beans so we can purge our grinder. Always remember to purge your grinder. We're gonna choose the grind settings. So for a filter coffee that is a drip, we choose the grind settings depending on the water flow. So 15 grams, that means that we're gonna need around 2 minutes 30 or 3 minutes 30 uh, of extraction time. We can even go sometimes to 4 minutes. But the closer we go to 4 minutes, maybe the closer we get to an over extraction. The lower to the 2 minutes 30 range, the closer we can get to an under extraction. So let's first first this one here. And it's over, we can leave it here and we can think also in preparing our water. So I already have some water prepared here, which I will use to preheat my filter. Yeah, I'm gonna take away those potential 
paper filter flavors that my coffee can get. And while I'm doing that, I can increase as well the temperature. So when I start brewing, I'm gonna have less heat loss. Okay, that is ready. I can start dosing. You go here. You go 14.915. Next step, we're gonna distribute evenly that bed. Once we have the water already ready, we set up our scale and our time. Let's have the water again ready. We can use the first water to have it well prepared. And what we're going to be doing now is choose a temperature. Which temperature are we going to be choosing? So, SC is telling us that between 94, 96, maybe 92 is the ideal range. If we go over 96, it's easy to over extract or to perceive dryness. If we go below 92, it would be easier to perceive under extractions. It's not exactly like this, but at this level, we're going to be simplifying. So, let's try not to go over 96. And I would say that this is just my opinion. Personally, I don't mind to use 90, but it can get tricky when we go below 88. Okay, we have the water ready. So what should we do? We have already thought about our coffee to water ratio. Yeah, 15 to 16. So 15 grams to 140 grams of water. We have our temperature. It's gonna reach 92 degrees, yes. And we're gonna try to match the time. If we're using 15 grams, we will be looking for an extraction between Let's say 233, 3, 3.30, something around that. And what is left? This time, what we're gonna be doing is dividing the extraction. We're gonna be getting first, the first minute, more or less, of the extraction, and later, the second minute and the third minute. Doing that, what I want to try to achieve is to showcase how different is to dissolve coffee at different stages. There are different solubles inside. We have different compounds, a different solubility rate. So some of them are gonna be easy to dissolve. So we get them mainly in the beginning. Some of them are not that easy and some are hard to dissolve. So looking at the extraction, we can find that. But before we start, I'm gonna talk about the bloom. So what is blooming? Blooming is two things. We can talk about the pre-infusion in order to get a more even extraction. And also, we are talking about degassing. So, after roasting, because of a striker degradation and pyrolysis, we're creating CO2. It's CO2 that gets inside of my bean, but I don't want it there. Uh, I would say that just when we're getting the coffee out of the roaster, CO2 starts degassing, going out, which is needed. Because the moment that I start pouring water to my coffee bed, uh, hydrolysis will happen. and it's not gonna be very efficient if I have CO2, so I need CO2 to degas. So I'm gonna use water in the beginning to make CO2 to go out, and at the same time, there's gonna be an expansion in volume. Coffee will absorb this water, and then I should think how much water coffee absorbs. So normally we talk about a ratio of one to two or one to 2.2. If I use 15 grams, I should use 30, maybe 34, 36, something like this. But uh, doing many experiments, uh, experiments recently, I saw that the absorption rate can be really high. It can go up to 2.6 or 2.8. So since, not, since then, I decided to use one to three. So if I use 15 grams, I'm gonna use 45 grams of water. So I will make sure that my whole coffee bed is gonna absorb that water. More, how long should I wait? You will find many videos and many people telling you that you need to wait 15 seconds or 30 seconds without any explanation. I would say that can work when coffee is not very fresh. That can work when uh, we have a coffee that has been degassing for a long time. But when we have a kind of fresh coffee, I also recommend 45 seconds, more or less, so you make sure that it is gonna be okay. We're gonna have a fully degassed coffee, all the most degassed we can. So let's start, we're gonna pour our water and 
in this motion we're gonna do a kind of spiral like I'm showcasing here so inside outside 15 45 a bit more now now we're gonna be waiting so from 0 to 0 15 so let's say the first 15 seconds we've been doing our pre-infusion now let's wait 40 seconds this time is a medium degas coffee it had like two weeks even though it's a quite uh, light so we're gonna pour again at 0 0.55 we can also see that in the beginning of the extraction we're getting more solid so we're gonna be having a thick body coffee in the beginning let's keep pouring yes So we go inside, outside, outside, inside, trying to pull in a way that we can repeat and potentially that we're distributing evenly all the water. So this is going to be the first step. We have 100 here. We're going to keep pouring again. So we keep pouring. Forget about the reading that we have right now in the scale because we just lost uh, the weight from the, the other coffee. So this time we're not uh, going to get the, the recipe we're looking for. We just want to show how extraction gives us a very different, uh, again, a very different product depending on the stage. So I would say that now this one is ready. We have the second step here. We can see a big difference in color. And stop. we keep pouring. It's okay. Clear time. It's stop. okay. We're not looking for extraction time. And let's see the last part. As we can see, this one is going to be. Um, less solid so we can understand that in the beginning of an extraction we get more solids that's why we have a different in the color and the last part of our extraction which is more difficult to extract which I'm gonna get now is gonna be even more clear so it's gonna be more watery let's say also bear in mind that we can only take our brewing method once the extraction is finished. I'm not going to take it if there's still water. So everything needs to be filtered. If I do it before that, the risk is that I will not be able to know what happened with the extraction. Also, what we are looking for is for this even bed. So we want a flat bed. It's ready. We take it. And finally, we get this. So if, if we now decide to taste this coffee, what's going to happen? Yeah. It's not only about the solids. So this coffee will have what we call a higher TDS, so more total dissolved solids. So there are more solids here and less liquid as a percentage. This one will have, let's say, a medium percentage of TDS, and this will have a very low percentage of TDS. If we talk about flavors, it's going to be very different as well. Here, what we dissolve is mainly salts and organic acids, so enzymatics. When we go to the next stage, what we mainly uh, dissolve is sugars, sugar browning, yeah, maillard compounds, some acids still, not so many salts, and and the last one, what we're going to be finding is mainly what we call dry distillate. So there are those compounds that are going to give us the smoky flavors, dry flavors, astringency. So the conjunction of the all three will be the good extraction. Yeah? Because we would be having, um, mixing the three of them, a balanced cup. If I'm just having this one, the first part is going to be closer to what we call another extraction. So salty, overly acidic, no flavors. 
the last part was going to have is what we call an over extraction. So we're going to have bitterness if our roast uh, past the medium uh, degree. We're going to have uh, dryness. We're going to have astringency. We're going to have a very unpleasant aftertaste. And the middle one is where we have the sugars. And we would think, maybe that's what I want. Yes? And that's why some people try to extract more here, the middle, and this way. But what's going to happen? This is simple. Sugars are not going to give us a balanced or complex cup. If we don't have this and a tiny bit of this, even if we don't perceive it, but just a tiny bit of this, we're not going to have a balanced and complex cup. So understanding this will give us some information when we're making a filter coffee. Because now that we know the defects, we just need to avoid them. If my coffee has an overly acidic taste or just saltiness, it means we need to extract more. So we look to those variables and let's extract more. If my coffee, on the other hand, has dryness or bitterness, we extract too much. So let's extract less. That is all for this one. Let's wait for the next one.